Welcome to the testing world. So previously we have seen how we can create base classes. Now I'll show you how we can create pages. By this pages, I'm going to implement POM structure. And again, I reiterate, I'm assuming that you have good knowledge of Selenium. You know that. What do you mean by the POM? So I'm not going to explain POM in detail. I'm going to just implement that structure in our project. So just to summarize that, POM means page object model. So here, for each of the page that you have in your application, I'm going to create class for it. Whatever the different task you are going to perform on your application on a different page, we are going to create a method for it. So for each page, we are going to have a class like, like we have a login page in my application. So for that page, I'm going to create a class over here. And whatever the activities you can perform on that page, like you can enter username, you can enter password, you can click on a sign button, we can click on forget password. So whatever the activities you can perform on your page, we are going to create a method for it. So how to do that? I'm just moving to my Eclipse. Here, I'm going to create a package and that's my package. I'm giving the name org testing word dot automation dot pages you can give any package name i'm just following the structure here you will notice a package is created inside this package i'm going to create a class with the name login page you can give any name i'm just giving login page as you know, we are going to automate Facebook. So I'm just opening that. As you know, we are going to automate Facebook application. So I have opened this. I'm going to automate login scenario of this application. So here, as per the POM, all the activities that you want to perform on your page, like I want to perform and a username, and a password click on a sign in button so these are the activities i want to perform on my page so for each of the activity you need to create a method i'm just moving to my page and my first method would be public void enter username and what username you want to enter i'm just taking it as a argument inside that method i'll write a code for entering the username i'm just keeping it blank as of now public void enter password and what password you want to enter again i'm taking from the user from the test case and just blank method as of now in the same way i'm creating one more method public void click sign in button and here we need not to go for any input from the user because just want to perform some action so i'm not taking any input these methods are going to perform on our page or i'll say on our browser and for performing activity on the browser we need a driver object because you know that we are going to write a code driver dot find element and then we are performing some action so to finding an element on the browser we need a driver object now I'm asking for web driver object as a argument. So I'm writing like web driver driver. First argument I need a driver object and then username. In the same way I'm asking here, in the same way I'm asking here. I'm going to improve this approach. A lot of modifications need to be done as of now. I'm just taking driver object in each method as of now. For writing the code, we need like driver dot find element and by dot whatever the element locator. So I'm going to use ID. We can use any element locator and then send keys. What data you want to pass? So I want to pass username. Here, I did not mention any element locator. I'll show you because these element locator I'm going to maintain in a separate file. I'll pick it from there. In the same way, that kind of code will be here, but this time, it should be password. I'm passing password here. 
and same way we are going to write code over here and on the place of send keys i'm going to use click so that's a very simple page i have created i'm going to do a lot of improvements in that first improvement you need element locator it could be id it could be xpath it could be anything okay what i do on this place i'm going to use xpath so that we can use different locators one approach is that we can write our element locator over here but again the problem is that in future if this element locator is going to be changed we need to go to the code level and going to make the changes so best approach is that we can make a separate property file i'm going to the src folder new and i'm going to create a file we can give any name i'm just giving the name elements and giving the extension properties i'm creating a property file we have already seen a property one more property file for setting the configuration in this property file i'm going to maintain element locators here we need to mention all the element locator which we are going to use maybe on the login page or maybe on the other pages as well so it's up to you create one property file or create multiple property file i'm just giving the name login username id on a login page i'm going for the username text box id i'm going to use so this value i'm going to pick from the html hope you know how we can pick values for the element locator so i'm opening the html of the text box here id is equal to email so i'm just mentioning email and again as i updated this key name could be anything i just take this key to make it understandable in the same way i'm going to locate for other text box so username password id for the password box i'm going to pick id so just right click on the password box inspect element we are getting this option so here the id is pass and for sign in button here we can che check we are using xpath so i'm using login sign in xpath this is my format which i'm using you can use your format if required i'm just trying to make it more readable and for xpath i need to find out the xpath of this element so right click inspect element and here we have a value is equal to login or type is equal to submit so i can use this so it's an input type of element you can check it that's an input where type is equal to value value is submit submit so i have maintained three element locators here you can maintain any number of element locators i want to use these element locators on my page so i'm going to the page and i want to create object of the resource bundle to pick the value from there one approach could be i'm creating a resource bundle object here resource bundle and element resource bundle dot get bundle and what is the name that is elements that's my file name right here we need not to give the extension because resource bundle class is used to pick the value from the property file so it will directly pick value from this property file now to pick the value i can use this object element dot get string which value you want to pick so i want to pick the value of this id i just copied it and pasted over here i want to use this object in the other method as well but this object is created inside this method so how we can use in the other methods what i can do i can create a constructor because 
I want this object to be created at the start and it can be used in any method. So I'm going to create a constructor and here I'm defining and here I'm going to create this resource bundle object. Again to make it public I can declare it outside the constructor. So now this object which is going to be created in constructor will be global can be used in any other methods. So now it will be easy for us to write this code on the other places as well like this and there we need password element locator so I'm just replacing the value to the password. In the same way here we need for x path of the sign in pattern so I just copy that and paste it over here. Now we have made our page bit flexible. It is picking element locator from the property file. But one problem is still there. We are passing driver object to every method. How we can improve that? What we can do, we can pass this driver object to the constructor. But and remove it from the method level because Whenever anybody is going to call these methods, he or she will create object of this class. Once the object of the class is created, we will pass the driver over here. And then we can use the same object on the methods level, on a method level. But point over here is this driver object, which is passed to the constructor is local to the constructor only. So what I can do, I'm creating a driver object with the name driver and we can pass this local value to the global value. So what I can do this dot driver is equal to driver. I'm going to explain the flow. First of all, whenever anybody who, who is creating the test case want to call the login page class method, first of all, he will have to create the object of this class. When we are creating the object of this class, First of all, the constructor will execute. Once the constructor will execute, it will pass the driver value, which is coming from the test case to the global value. And now whatever the method we are going to call, it will use the driver, which is set by the constructor. So whatever the value is coming to the constructor is set to the global and we can use that value. So the driver object is passed to the complete class. And again, I say, if you're not comfortable on this kind of approach, it's better to go for our Selenium with Java course. You will get all this understanding there. I'm just assuming you have this understanding and we are creating framework directly. So here in this session, we have seen how we can create pages. As of now, I have created a structure of the login page only, but it might be possible in your application, we have 10, 15, 20 pages. So what you need to do, you need to create page class for each of the page that you are having in your application and whatever the activities you are going to perform on your pages you need to create a method for that as of now for the login page it could be it could be many activities you can click on this forget an account you can click you can enter first name surname you can have many activities i have just created method for three activities you can have many activities so you can create method for each and every activity so that's all we have for the, the session. Here we see how we can create pages. Thanks for watching this video. Hello all. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions regarding this video, please ask in the comment section. And also please like and subscribe for more software testing courses. Also we are offering a wonderful package of software testing online video courses in dollar 200 find us on facebook for more offers and updates here is the url facebook.com testing word india